Over time, if we've got chronic stress for some reason, um, because we're, we're because of our perception of the world around us, or we're not taking time to take care of ourselves, or we're eating a diet that's that's really stressful on the body, or we're not getting enough sleep, or um, or we have a chronic infection. I mean, we do see this with 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 illnesses too, like a chronic infection. Those chronic stressful events over time really can disrupt how all aspects of our, our hormone system works together, that whole HPA axis works, and it can get uh, dysregulated. And so that's that whole talk of that HPA axis dysregulation. So if your hypothalamus, which is in your brain, and your pituitary, yes. so it's all the command and control centers in your brain that then send messages to your adrenal glands that are on top of your kidneys, and they produce adrenaline, yes. right? Cortisol, cortisol. Uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine, but also DHEA, which is a, you know, is a hormone that gets turned into testosterone and estrogen and uh, hormones that impact our blood pressure and uh, electrolyte balance. So th it's involved in a lot of things. Um, and it's important to recognize that that all of uh, that the pituitary also impacts lots of other hormones in our body, our female hormones, our male hormones, and so our thyroid hormones. It's all it's all really connected, which is interesting as well. So when people are under a lot of chronic stress over time, the cortisol levels are um, are remaining higher than they should be for long periods of time, and so this is a whole feedback loop, right? This 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 system in our body is a whole feedback loop. So that high cortisol sort of shifts the way that the there's a feedback mechanism that occurs and, and in a way the body sort of s it slows everything down. Mm -hmm. And so over time with high levels of, of cortisol uh, that are getting released all the time, people start to crash. They have like that, what they call burnout yeah. or, you know, their body sort of just slows down. We see their thyroid slow down. We see, we can see um, other hormones shift, but we definitely can over time, if we look, we can see a decrease in, in cortisol levels. So we can do some special tests that, that, that look at that. It's so important what you're saying because you know the stress response is a good thing in the short run, but not in the long right. term. And we never really had these chronic stresses that we do now. We'd be in threat of danger, we'd mount the response, it was good. Right now, you're releasing high amounts of cortisol and it's like a drug we give for people with autoimmune disease called prednisone. Yes. Uh, or when you, for example, have a disease called Cushing's disease where you're adrenal glands or a pituitary tumor will produce a lot of cortisol that is not regulated by any feedback mechanisms. Yeah. And when that happens, you get all these problems, right? You get high blood pressure, you get mm -hmm. diabetes, your brain shrinks, the memory center in your brain shrinks, yeah. so you can get dementia, you have muscle loss, yeah. right? You're you more likely to get sick more easily. More likely to get sick, your yep. immune system stops working as well. Yep. So you're, you're, you're really, accelerating all these age-related diseases mm -hmm. and you're also suffering from FLC syndrome, which is basically when you feel like crap. So so let's let's drill down into some of the symptoms that people who might have this dysfunction get. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times people will, will, you know, people with HPA axis dysfunction, they'll say, well, you know, I, I I have a good night's sleep, but I still feel tired in the morning. I can't get going. Or other people, depending on where they are in this whole process, they may feel like they're anxious all the time. They can't calm down. They're 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 uh, tired but wired, and they're just you know really you get into bed anxious. and you lay there. You're tired, but you yeah. can't fall asleep. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they they can have a hard time dealing with the stress of everyday life. Um, they can feel more depressed or or irritable. Uh, things that they used to be able to do really easily are hard to do. So things that they they you know their job maybe or. Um, uh, uh, handling going to the grocery store even. You know, things that, that used to be really easy to do every day become tasks for them. They feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. and exhausted. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they might get, as I said, sick more easily. Uh, they You can have more cravings for foods. You want it, you're looking Sugar. for things to pick you up, right? Yeah. So sugary foods, uh, salty foods, can you have cravings for them? You may feel more fatigued um, when you stand up. You get more tired. You may have low blood pressure um, over time and yeah. low blood sugar over time with with an underactive HPA axis. So yeah, there's often this syndrome I see of tall, thin women, um, mm -hmm. which is really common, where they they get sort of adrenal burnout. 
They get low blood pressure, so dizzy when they stand up. Mm -hmm. They crave salt. They have anxiety. They have palpitations. They tend to get hypoglycemic, so their blood sugar actually is is not coming up when it should. And so you can kind of pretty much tell that this is going on with people. But what's interesting is, is it might be worth breaking down is that adrenal burnout, let's just call it that, yep. comes in stages, right? Absolutely. So the, the first stage is, is, tell us about the first stage and how it progresses to full burnout. Absolutely. Because the so symptoms and the treatment are a little different for each one. They are a little different. Different. So at first, when you're when you're when you've got that overactive adrenal gland, it's the beginning, let's say, of a, of just handling all this chronic stress. Um, people feel that wired and tired. They're like anxious. They feel like they just can't calm down. They they feel um, upregulated inside. And um, and uh, and then over time, what can happen is with having that chronic levels of high cortisol, what can happen over time, as we talked about with that feedback loop, they they get this um, they get a decreased level of cortisol that occurs. So initial see and high levels. Initial when you we do see the high testing. And we'll talk let's we'll talk about the testing yeah, in yeah. a minute. Yeah. And then you see and then over time we see low. And when when it's flat line, what it feels like is burned out. Yeah. You know, you just feel exhausted. You can't get going in the morning. You're getting sick more frequently. You're um, that's when you see a lot of low blood pressure, low blood sugar, you know, salt cravings, but just, you know, literally you feel that burned out, you know, you're exhausted feeling. So one is like chronically high and there's like chronically low and there's kind of an in between where you get low in the morning and high at night. So you're exhausted yep. in the morning, but you can't fall asleep at night because you're Whole, More, yeah, it's like flipped. Your circadian rhythm is all screwed. So that's what we do differently than, than what, you know, uh, conventional doctors often do. So by the way, this isn't even a diagnosis in conventional medicine. No, you know, really, like you were saying, if if somebody has really uh, low cortisol or really high cortisol on blood testing, they'll call it, you know, maybe Cushing's or Addison's or a very serious adrenal yeah. issue. And and we were taught about that in medical school, but we weren't really taught about this this. Um, this these situations where if you did a blood level first thing in the morning it probably would look okay and you wouldn't really see a lot of of of, of abnormalities in the blood testing but if you look a little deeper and you do saliva testing and you check saliva four times in a day and you can check saliva when you uh, saliva for cortisol when you first wake up in the morning they call that the cortisol awakening response um, what we should see what we should see with that saliva testing is that when you first wake up in the morning, your cortisol increases. It's almost like a stress test for your for your adrenal glands. The um, the cortisol awakening response is like a stress test for your adrenal glands. Getting up in the morning is a little bit of a stress for the body, right? It needs to get going and 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 wake up. And so what we typically see is the cortisol increase first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. We want to see that. That means that the system's working well. And what we see is the cortisol levels in the beginning of the day are higher. And as the day goes on, they come down. So when you check somebody's saliva tests during the day, we should see it go up when they first wake up in the morning and then start to come down as the day goes on. And that's a very normal pattern. And what we were talking about is over time, if people have a, a lot of stress and anxiety going on, you might see high levels of cortisol. And then over time, you might see that it start to flip where they're low in the morning, but too high at night. And then if things really go on for a while, you might see a, a low level of cortisol throughout the whole day. And it really gives us a lot of information about how best to treat somebody and how best to take care of them and what, what they need to really focus on. This is something you wouldn't get at a traditional doctor's office. They're not going to... No. look at your uh, salivate cortisol levels, they'll say, oh, well, you have Cushing's and there's tests for that or Addison's and there's tests for that. But short of these two extremes, and that's what's so different about functional medicine. It's really about this continuum of dysfunction. It's not just on or off. It's not like you have diabetes or you don't. Yeah. Right? And like you have high blood pressure, you don't. It's a gradual worsening over time. And 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 those diseases are very particular because they're either a tumor, which is Cushing's, or they're an autoimmune disease, which is usually caused by gluten, the Addison's disease, which is what President Kennedy had, actually. Yes. Um, and, and it certainly, I'm sure, affected him. So when you have these patients come in, you do this history, you find these symptoms, you sort of hear, hear their story. Uh, how do you start to approach correcting this? Because you know, because I found you know some things are really easy in functional medicine. Someone has you know bacterial overgrowth, or they have gut issues, irritable bowel, one, two, three, it's fixed. This takes a little bit of time because of the amount of stress we've put on our adrenals, we have to constantly 
try to build them back up over yes. time. And it takes a little bit of time to recover. Yeah. I mean, I think what's a f fascinating is, you know, and what we realize is the body has this tremendous ability to heal, right? And we, this is an area where our body can heal. We see it heal all the time. It just sometimes takes a little TLC and some care. And that's where, that's where the lifestyle factors really, really make a huge impact. You know, we work with people to, to really balance their their diet and focus on nutrition and and we can delve into each of these more you know getting good sleep resting resting is important right we need to give our body time to rest and you know we're living in a world where it's hard sometimes to turn mm -hmm. it off and people aren't mm -hmm. and so 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 they're really uh, having issues because of it so we have to help them rest and recuperate and get in their regular meditation and and breath work and and take time for themselves and turn off the lights at night and, you know, turn off the computer and the cell phone. And, you know, diet makes a huge difference. There's so much we can do. Wait, wait, before you get into diet, yeah. let's go back to what you just said, because the light thing, the computers, the screen, it's not just that they're distracting. There's a biology around your adrenals that has to do with something called your circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. And it requires certain types of stimuli at certain times of the day and and different kinds of stimuli at the other times of the day. So in the morning, the way to get going with your circadian rhythm and your adrenal glands to properly function is to have sunlight for Absolutely. 20 minutes in the morning, which how many of us actually do that yeah. and get outside? And, and the same thing at night, if you are stimulating your eyes with bright light, that isn't mm -hmm. have all, all the blue filtered out, which is you can just the blue black glasses or just getting off screens, you will actually stimulate more awakefulness and you will suppress cortisol because like, I mean, suppress melatonin. Yes. Right. Because in the morning you wake up and you, you see the sunlight, well, your melatonin levels go down so you don't feel sleepy all day. Yep. But, but if you're having light at night, it actually keeps the melatonin down so you mm -hmm. can't fall asleep. Yeah, I mean, so circadian rhythm is is critical, and um, we're gonna we're gonna touch on it with one of the cases I have because because uh, you know we'll get into it in a minute. But she was working more in the evening shift, and and I think it it, it really is hard for a lot of people with depending on the shifts that they have to work. But you mentioned that you know getting up in the morning, getting outside, getting that sunshine uh, helps for so many reasons. It helps our mood, it helps us fall asleep more at night, and it helps us. You know, our body likes to have regularity and rhythm. And I think that's one thing we really work on with people when they're really struggling with this is is getting them in some pattern and rhythm of mm -hmm. of you know getting a good sleep cycle, get getting a good eating cycle. You know, not not grabbing and going. You know, not skipping meals. Um, I mean, there's a lot to be said for fasting. You know, you've done a lot of uh, podcasts on this, and there can be really a lot of great things with fasting. But sometimes when people are really, they're, when their um, HPA axis is really underactive and it's not working very well, and if they've got the signs of burnout or adrenal dysfunction, right? We um, uh, fasting sometimes for too long can be more stress on their body. Yeah. Some extreme diets can be more stress Successful. on their body. And they might not be at a point where they can do it, they can they can feel good with it, right? It, they can't get all the benefit from it. So they can still fast for 12 hours, but we might not be fasting them for 16 hours or 18 hours during that time. Well, it's really important what you bring up about food because there are certain foods that actually cause stress in the body, independent oh, yes. of your thoughts. And there are certain foods that reduce stress in the body, independent mm -hmm. of what you're thinking, right? Yes. So it, it, it actually food can be a stressor or a relaxer, depending on what you're eating. Can you talk about the foods that tend to cause more cortisol, adrenaline, and stress in the body? And right. then some of the foods that we would be thinking about that might help reduce that. That's such a great point. You know, you know, if we, if we eat, um, um, uh, a donut and with coffee and sugar. I'm going to an extreme here for breakfast. That's right? not that extreme. It's probably the <laughs> breakfast of most Americans. Dunkin' that Donuts That is really coffee. stressful on the body, mm. right? Why? Or because it causes this spike in our blood sugar because it gets digested and absorbed really quickly. Our blood blood sugar goes up quickly, and the body goes, "Oh no!" Right? That's a it, it, it gets stressful. For the body, the body produces a bunch of insulin to help lower it, and and then what happens is the blood sugar drops afterwards. And so those ups and downs in blood sugar like that are really stressful for the body. 
And and in when the if your blood, blood sugar is dropping, it's a life threatening emergency. You got to go get food. <laughs> right, right. So those you know, if you're if you're you know eating a lot of uh, foods that cause your blood sugar to go up and then drop, with you know those those easily to digest and absorb. You know, you have a can of, a can of soda. I mean, we're you know those things really are stressful for the body. They create this stress. They create the cortisol response. It's one of the reasons we get a lot of weight gain around the belly when we eat those kind of foods because they are stressful for the body. And so instead we want to be really balancing our blood sugar. And okay, before, before you get into how to fix it, I, I just want to point out this study that was just so mind blowing when I read it years ago by a friend of ours, Dr. David Ludwig from Harvard. And he took, he took kids that were overweight and fed them three different breakfasts, right? Yep. Oatmeal, steel cutouts, and an omelet. Same calories, okay? Same calories, but different carbohydrate, protein, different fat. What he found was that the kids who had the regular oatmeal, like the quickly absorbed oatmeal, we think oatmeal is healthy, right? It's not like they're having a donut. Right. Their insulin went up, obviously their blood sugar went up, but their cortisol went up, their adrenaline went up. Yep. So the body perceived it as a stress. Yes. Whereas the kids who ate the omelet didn't happen. Yes. And then the kids who ate the oatmeal were hungrier, wanted more food. So we know that, that starch and sugar create a biological stress response in the body. And that's bad. In addition to the fact that the sugar causes a problem, your brain chemistry and your neurotransmitters are talking to your fat cells. And they're telling them when they're under stress to store more fat. So literally stress makes you gain weight independent of what you're eating. So it's really, it's fascinating when you look at weight and other issues, it's so connected. It's so connected. It's it's fascinating. So I mean, so really balancing blood sugar is is so powerful. It's, you know, I mean, people sometimes we say these things again and again, like, you know, balance your blood sugar, have a good source of protein, healthy fat and fiber at each meal. And sometimes we say it so much that I wonder people just, oh no, yeah, I mean. it's the same thing. They're just saying eat healthy. <laughs> but it's really critical to have a good source of protein, healthy fat, and great source of fiber at every meal because it's it's it it is not allowing for that stress response to happen in the body. It's it's nourishing the body, and that's exactly what the body needs. Hmm. So yeah, and so I think you know using food and having the right quality fats, low glycemic diet, lots of fiber, phytochemicals. These are all messenger molecules that help reduce the stress in the body. Yes. So, um, you know, so we always start with food first, and this is a great place to start in this area, you know, really working to balance the blood sugar, preventing those spikes in blood sugar, preventing that stress. Yeah. We often work to pull people off of caffeine for a period of time. Mm. You know, um, it, it, if they're in that state where they're really anxious, yeah, they don't need the caffeine. If they're in that state where they're burnt out and exhausted, they might feel like they need the caffeine, but that's actually you know, a little bit of a stress for their body. And so when the adrenal glands or the whole HPA axis isn't able to handle that stress at this point in time, you don't want to add to it. So we often will pull people away from caffeine or really lower their levels or keep it to a little bit of green tea and and just not excessive amounts. How about alcohol? Is that going to relax you? Or is it going <laughs> to cause a problem? <laughs> You know, I mean, so, you know, it's it's really with alcohol, it's all about moderation, right? It's really all about moderation. We know that too much alcohol is going to wake us up in the middle of the night. Um, we know that when it wears off, it's, it's you know, alcohol is a depressant. When it wears off, it we get that rebound stimulating effect. Many We really need to be working on sleep during this period mm -hmm. of time, well, all the time. But we, we need to get good restful sleep. So we just have to watch the amount. I mean, that's really, really important. And yeah. so for some some of our patients, we take them off of most of the alcohol for a period of time. And, you know, it also wears down your B vitamins. And B vitamins are really important for- So the, when you drink, you deplete your B vitamins. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And B vitamins are critical for the functioning of our adrenal glands. So so things that you might have been, you know, people will say to me, well, I, I've always had two cups of coffee in the morning and it's been fine. You know, why can't I have two cups of coffee now in the morning? And and, and, you know, when you get to that exhausted, burnt out stage, um, that that's just too much for your body at this period of time. You know, we just have to be a little more gentle. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And I also think what you said before, I want to come back to, because it's, it's such an important point. We jump right over it. You said something that uh, I think is worth underscoring, which is that infections or any physical illness 
can cause a stress response. Yes. So let's say you have Lyme disease or you have a virus or whatever. Independent of well, your thoughts or feelings or perceptions, it can cause a stress. And there are certain foods that drive inflammation that cause a physiologic stress response. So anything in the body that causes inflammation, either your thoughts, which can cause inflammation, yeah. or gluten or dairy or food sensitivities or sugar, all these can cause a stress response. So sometimes getting rid of not just the junk food, obviously, and the sugar, but actually potential food sensitivities or gluten, dairy can be enormously effective. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Irritable bowel is when you have symptoms of bloating or gas, distension, constipation, diarrhea, where your bowel is just irritable. The bacteria ferment the sugars in the food you're eating and you blow up. That's why you get this bloating right after meals. We call that 